this is going to okay. be captured. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so as you guys can see from the screen, we've got Trooper Malloy here um, with the Illinois State Police, and he's got a presentation he's going to, to deliver to you. And then if you guys have questions, um, make sure that, you know, you do what you always do, be respectful, raise your hand. Do you want them to save their questions till the end or? No, I like to, just if something comes up and you have a question, just, just raise your hand and we'll go. We'll go from there. Okay, perfect. So you guys go ahead and give him your undivided attention, Trooper Malloy. All right, well. Like I said, I'm from District 9. My name is Trooper Travis Malloy. I've been with the Illinois State Police 16 years now. Uh, done a little bit of everything. I started in District 6, which is like Bloomington Pontiac. Came to District 9, left District 9, did executive protection. Traveled around with the governor for about five years. After there, was a staff officer for one of our colonels. Went out to the academy. Taught for about a year. I went on a military deployment, came back, and I've been in District 9 probably the last three years. I've been doing this program. Probably two. So, with that said, I've kind of seen it all, done it all. Um, obviously, you guys know that in Illinois policing is changing, right? So, but we want you guys to understand the basics, right? You're going to have your driver's license. You're going to have more freedom than you've ever had. What state is there? A state route that runs right through town here? Is that route four? Route four. Yep. You know these crashes. All these pictures that I show you. They're from District 9. Some of them are pretty graphic, so if you have a problem with it, just raise your hand. We'll let you step out while we talk about it, okay? Um, the reason why we do that is because this stuff happens, you guys. It happens every day on these rivers. Like I told you this morning, uh, you know, we're already chasing a guy through the town of Pawnee, right? You never know what's going on. Um, why do you have to be doing everything right when you're driving? Anybody? Because everyone else isn't, right? We could sit out there on those road grades and write, I mean, we write tickets for in the high 90s all day, every day, right? When you think of the Illinois State Police, what do you think our job is? Keep you safe, right? But when people think of the Illinois State Police, if you get pulled over by them, what do you think? People think you're going to get a ticket, right? That's what people think we do. I'm gonna to explain to you what gets you tickets, okay, versus warnings, right? And why we wreck tickets to 16 year old drivers. This is what drives everything we do as an agency, right? We want zero fatalities. This is what drives, you know, how many people have heard cops have quotas they have to keep up with? Believe it or not, we do not have quotas. My boss cannot even actually talk to me about a specific number of tickets I have to run, right? If he does, he can get in trouble. Statistically, one in five 16 year old drivers will be in a crash within the first year of getting their driver's license. So he said there's 20 in here. So, yeah, so probably about four or five of you statistically could be involved in motor vehicle crash within the first year of getting your driver's license. The fatal four. Why do you think we call it the fatal four? It calls the. Yeah, it's what leads to all our fatals. Guys, this right here is what gets you tickets from the Illinois State Police, okay? Why do you think we write them, especially to 16-year-old drivers? Because you're new, right? Because you don't know what you're doing. If you're not wearing your seatbelt at 16, you're not going to have it on at 18, you're not going to have it on at 21 when you can legally drink and drive, right? So we want to correct those bad habits now. Fatal four, speeding, driving impaired, distracted, driving, and not wearing your seatbelt. I grew up. Never even thought about being a cop. I was at an open gym one time. We were playing basketball. I was sitting out. Guy sitting next to me was one of my assistant football coaches. He was asking me what I was going to do when I graduated college. I had no idea. Told me about the state police. I applied and got on. And now I couldn't imagine doing anything else, right? So I don't have really a lot of pet peeves like some people do, but mine is seatbelts. I will write you a seatbelt ticket all day, every day. I've seen too many crazy crashes where people should have lived and didn't, right? And people that should have died and walked away. Over 1,200 people are killed per month due to speed-related crashes. Like I said, these are all pictures of crashes that happen in District 9. Okay? 
That's nationwide. That's not just in Illinois. This crash right here, this happened on I-55 southbound. You guys know where Auburn Pawnee is? Like, that's that. You can see the truck stop sign. If you look back over here, this guy was heading southbound. And you can see his tracks where he comes across right here. Hits that guardrail. See all the emergency vehicles. You see part of the car. See the debris field. If I pull up to that and I see debris spread all over the place, that obviously tells me that speed's a factor, right? Because the faster you're going, the more the debris can spread out. That's the driver underneath that sheet. Right? Why do we have to leave you there? Does anybody have any idea? What are you responsible for when you drive that car? Everything you do with it, everyone in it, everything in it, right? Do you guys understand that? Okay. Part of this car hit that red truck. So whenever there's a two-vehicle accident, when someone dies, the Illinois State Police has our traffic crash reconstruction unit come out. We do that because if you hurt someone with that car, what can happen to you? Can you get sued by somebody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Those guys come out. They do some big, long report. And unfortunately, if you get thrown from the car, one of the measurements they have to take is how far you came out. Okay? So you stay there until then. That's the back half of that car. What's that right there? Yeah, that's the driver and passenger seat. Uh, the TCRU guys, they did their big long report. They estimated that when he left the roadway, he was going about 110, and when he hit the guardrail, he's going about 100. Okay, he just tore the car in half. Remember in the first picture, you can just see the, the bed of that truck? This is how far down the road that part of that car came. And that's actually what hit the truck and caused that damage. Okay, this is like I said. That guy's coming along. If you're the driver of that red truck, if you're not paying attention, right? Bad things could happen. Driving under the influence, driving impaired. You guys are 14, 15 years old. We know kids your age drink, right? We come across it, not that often, but I grew up in a small town from New Berlin, uh, pretzels, but this is a big one, right? You're going to have your driver's license now. Okay, you're going to get with your friends. You're going to have a couple drinks after a big basketball victory on a Friday. If you're going to do it, right, be responsible about it. You're not getting behind the wheel. Okay. Derek King and Nicholas Hodgins. These guys were 17 years old when they died. Okay. Can you imagine only having a couple years left to live? They went out on a Friday night and were drinking and driving, pulled out in front of that truck. We had to cut the roof off the car just to get them out. Okay. A common theme when we talk about all this stuff is you have to ask yourself, is any of this stuff worth your life? Okay. In the last month in District 9, we've had three fatals. Two of them were ejected. One girl was ejected and because she didn't have her seatbelt on. And she was DUI. She just graduated from Williamsville High School, I think, last year. Sobriety tests are HDN, one leg stand, walk and turn, and your portal breath test. HDN is the horizontal gaze nystagmus. How many people have seen on like TV or in the movies where they're checking your eyes like that? After 16 years, I can tell on that test alone if you're going to be DUI. Been doing this long enough, right? One leg stand, it sounds just like this. Please stand with your heels and toes together and your arms at your sides. Raise either foot approximately six inches off the ground to toe pointed out. Hold that position while you count out loud for 30 seconds in the following manner. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on. Or until I tell you to stop. You put your foot down, immediately lift it back up, and continue counting. Watch your raised foot while you're counting. Keep your arms at your sides. Does that sound that hard? No. Now say I pull you over because you got a headlight out, right? What are the two things I want to ask to see? And driver's license and insurance, right? 
you don't know where your insurance card is at right away, do you? I want you rifling through your glove box or center console. No, just sit there and relax, right? What do I look for when I come up to the car? As a police officer, what am I watching for? Your hands, right? I want to see your hands. That's what they always say. Their hand, what's in your hands or your hands are what can hurt me. So you don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to stick them out the window, right? You don't even have to put both of them on your steering wheel, but don't have them in your pockets. Don't be leaned over looking through your glove box, all that stuff. You don't know where something's at. We'll tell you what we need. So I pull you over for a headlight, something that I would typically write you a warning for. Right? Say you're driving close to curfew, which what is curfew for you guys? No, it's 11 at uh, weekends and 10 on weekdays. Yeah, 11 on Friday and Saturday. Okay, so if I pull you over and it's 11.15 on a Friday night, what does that make your driver's license? Not valid. Okay. Now, if you're being responsible and you're heading home or whatever, you just got back from a basketball game or whatever, um, you know, like, obviously we're going to work with you, but, okay. I got a car full of 16-year-old girls. Um, I was working at overtime detail probably two weeks ago, and it just started snowing. At night, there were five 16 year olds, which is also have, right? Under the graduated driver's license law. Going 98 and a 70. It was one of their girls' birthday, right? That's, yeah, big donut. So, I pull you over for a headlight. It's close to curfew. And I tell you, hey, I'm tripping one of the Illinois State Police. I stopped you for your headlight. Asking for your driver's license and insurance, I'm gonna be like, by the way, I smell the odor of alcohol. Have you had anything to drink? Get you out. These are the tests I'm gonna ask you to do. Next thing you know, you're standing on the side of Route 4, right? It's cold out. Those tests suddenly become not so easy, right? You already know you're in trouble because at your age, what's the legal limit? Zero, right? You can't have anything. What is the legal limit in Illinois? Do you guys know? Point zero eight. Point zero eight. Okay. How much is a DUI? Sixteen thousand one hundred nine. I did that number probably two years ago when I started this job. I bet you it's probably around nineteen or twenty thousand. So, it says insurance forty five hundred, legal fees two thousand. That says uncontested. I went to court on the seatbelt ticket probably a month ago. How much is a fine in Illinois? For a traffic ticket. Does anyone know? $164. Right? A lot of money. Okay? I have a kid that's 17 and 16. So far, they're doing a great job driving. Knock on, knock on wood. But $164 is a lot of money. They both work at this little pizza place in Springfield. You know, that's probably two weeks worth of pay for them. So what went to court on the seatbelt ticket. We were there about five minutes. I get called up to the stand, say I was working, pulled her over, didn't have her seatbelt on. Like, I know that for a fact, or I went and pulled her over. She goes up there and she's like, well, just not a lot of money, blah, 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 judge rules in our favor. And because we were in there that five minutes, the fine doubles, she paid, paid about 300 and some odd dollars. Okay. So imagine if you actually have to fight a DUI. Legal transportation of alcohol on a roadway, legal possession of alcohol, legal consumption, zero tolerance, and aggravated DUI. So say I have you four in a car right here. You're my driver, front seat passenger, you two are in the back, right? On a Friday night, you're going to go to your house, have some drinks. You pick up a bottle of vodka from her house. It's unopened right now. I stop you because you have a headlight out, and I go up there. What am I going to ask you for? Driver's license and, and insurance. insurance. And then I'm going to say, oh, by the way, I see that bottle of vodka back there. Okay. What charges do you have right then? Possession of alcohol. And? Too many people. Legal transportation of alcohol on a roadway, legal possession of alcohol. Now, here's the thing. What happens when I say, whose is this? What are you going to say? Right there, not mine. That's what everyone says. Not mine. 
They don't want to rat out their friends, everything else. What happens when all four people in the car say that? No, everybody does. We can write everybody does. Write, write everybody tickets. You guys, I'm not doing that to be a jerk. I'm doing that because that's not our job. Okay? Our job is to get it off the roadway and get you home safe. If you go to court and those tickets get dismissed, I don't really care. Right? I'm not going to stand there. I'll probably, if that happens, what I do is I get them out one at a time, ask them myself so they're not around their friends. If everyone still says, I don't know, then I charge everybody. Up. It's like I told you, you have to be responsible for what's in that car. Right? And we want you guys to understand that. Abby Combs, come to the office. So now say that bottle is open and everyone took a drink out of it. Now what charges do you have? For everyone, and then what could potentially the driver have? DUI. DUI or zero tolerance, right? So how zero tolerance works is basically under 0.08 from zero, you get zero tolerance. DUI, same thing pretty much just for someone that's your age. Okay, if you're over 0.08, you get the actual DUI. Okay. Then aggravated DUI. Basically, that's you're drinking, you're underage, and you run through a stop sign and you hit and hurt somebody. Okay, that's an aggravated. We don't see that a lot with you guys. Okay, the underage drinking um, has really kind of gone down, which good. What do we see with you guys? Your phone. You can't stay off your phone, right? This fatal crash happened on I-55, my pulse 97. Guy was going so fast, driver left the roadway. He actually hit right here and then slid down. He was speeding, but he had a seatbelt on, right? Passenger died. She didn't have her seatbelt on. Okay. You can kind of see the windshield where she went up and smashed the windshield. Does that area look that bad? She has her seatbelt on. Does she probably live? Right? It's like a, with that fatal four. It's usually a combination of those, right? He was speeding. She didn't have her seatbelt on, is what leads to our fate. Okay? This is kind of a cheesy video. Actually, hold on. Let me turn the volume on. What'd you see there? Yeah. Guys, I can't stress this enough, right? Like, I came up on a crash one time. It was a little yellow Chevy Cavalier. I left the interstate, rolled it out in Cornfield. I get there, and I knew it was a single person in the car. Um, doors are completely blown off this thing. I'm thinking it's going to be a fatal. It's a single vehicle, so we don't call out TCRU. Um, so I just do, I take measurements, pictures, all that stuff. Hurry up, do my job, tow the car, head to the hospital. It was a 17-year-old kid. He, when I got to the hospital, he had already been released. He was sitting there with his parents waiting for me to get there with him. Okay. I had an old lady one time in Auburn on Route 4, right at 104. She comes up, rear ends a, rear ends a truck. She was driving a minivan. She was old, old, right? But she didn't have her seatbelt on. She hits the steering wheel, right? Dies from internal injuries. Had she lived and been uninjured, the van had such minimal damage on it that it could have been driven from the seat. Okay? Like those are just two quick examples of why you need to wear your seatbelt. This person right here, do you think they lived or died? They lived, right? This is on 55. They went through the median, came across, got smoked by that semi. We had to cut the B pillar out just to get her out. Surprisingly enough, if you were to move that door out of the way, the only part on that car that's not smashed is where her legs were. 
Okay. This one right here, you think they live or die? Catch it on. They did die. Okay. I was on this one. You can see in the background, there's snow on the ground, kind of like there is now. She had a slip spot, rolled, didn't have her seatbelt on. When she came out, this part right here, caught her head, cut it right in half. Right? If she had her seatbelt on, do you think she lives? Does that area look that bad? Okay. Not that bad. This part right here, see lots of smoke. Usually that's a sign that's pretty bad. This is unit one. This is the at fault driver, okay? He's coming along. Um, you can't see it because it's cut off, but there's construction barrels uh, right here. He's coming along not paying attention. See, there's the construction barrels not paying attention. He actually hits this car first, pushes it over here, gets the guardrail, continues forward, hits the back of that flatbed, and you can see his hood wedged underneath there. Why don't we show you this? Like I said earlier, right, you have to be doing everything right because everyone else is. Okay. How can something hurt you? Weight times speed equals force. So anything 100, if 100 pounds going 20 miles an hour, that equals 2,000 pounds of force. You want to hear play football? How much does your helmet weigh? All right. All right, pounder team, right? All right, being there. Okay, so if you have that in the backseat of your car and your car starts rolling over and that starts flying around, you think that can hurt you? Yeah. yeah. Anything with any kind of weight to it, I always recommend that you put it in the trunk. Three stages of a crash, crash strikes object, then there's a human crash at the same speed, then the internal crash, that's the organs moving, like the old lady I told you about, right? Rear ends the truck. She goes into the steering wheel, then her organs go into her rib cage, and that's ultimately what it goes. Okay. Here's a car crash with no seatbelt. There's a timer at the bottom, right? Where's that car laying at? On his side, right? Right on his head. Okay. You see him fly around that car? That's why if you're in the car with anyone else, and they're, even though they're in the back seat, they're like, I don't need to wear my seatbelt. That's why they should wear their seatbelt, okay? If you're in that car and he does that, do you think you're injured now? Well, yeah, probably, right? Especially if you're in that back track because he's on top of you. Here's a car crash with a seatbelt. Shows it in regular speed and then in slow motion. Watch the difference. You see her bags flying around. Luckily, they didn't have you know any weight to them. But watch her face as the glass flies by. Right there. He's still wrapping. What is she injured? What is she? She's pissed, right? She's mad. 
Guys, that's sort of the difference between having your seatbelt on and not having your seatbelt on, okay? Not that bad things can happen depending on what happens, right? You guys know that, but statistically, you're way more likely to be uninjured if you have your seatbelt on. This one, this guy's running from the cops without a seatbelt on. You see him get ejected? Okay, this right here, this happened on I-55 at mile post 94. This guy was driving along. I won't leave that up there, right? This guy was driving along. Nice night out. Wasn't on his phone. Wasn't was speeding, but not anything crazy. But he didn't have a seatbelt on. Left the roadway, rolled his car, came out and landed on the interstate, right? When that happens, right, when you come out from not having your seatbelt on, and you look like that, here's what happens. Trooper Malloy goes to your house, right? We call the court around, handle the crash, then we go to the house to do the notification, right? Then what happens? Mom or dad has to come down and identify the body, okay? And when you look like that, you have an open or closed casket funeral. Mm -hmm. Closed, right? So brother, sisters, girlfriend, boyfriend, all that stuff, they just never get to see you again, right? Like I said, you have to ask yourself, does any of this stuff work your life? Okay. I hope when we get out of here, I hope I never see any one of you again. But if I pull you over, if you're driving on around Florida Springfield and you don't have your seatbelt on, I will write you a ticket. Not because I want to, but because of what I've seen and what I've explained to you. Okay. I don't want to talk to you, Interesting. you know what? Because we've been doing it for so long that it's just easy. Um, you know, older vehicles, obviously older trucks that sit up real high, those are easy to tell. The ones that are real hard for me are the ones that come out of the seat, um, the cars that have those. And here's the thing, guys. If I if I can't tell, I just don't pull you over. If there's any doubt in my mind, I just don't pull you over. Okay? So, but just looking for it. Over and over. Is it illegal to have your foot outside the car? Do you have your seatbelt back and you have your foot on the mirror? On the mirror? Uh, no. Would I recommend it? No. Are you talking like as a passenger? Obviously not as a driver. Yeah. I didn't do that. As a passenger, no. If you have your seatbelt on, it's no different than having your arm out the window. But if something happens, you know what I mean, then. Obviously, that's not going to be good. Distracted driving. What do you think of when I say distracted driving? Yeah, what could it be? Putting on makeup, right? Changing your music, doing all that stuff, okay? This guy's drinking his coffee, talking on his phone. This lady's putting on her makeup. She's looking down, texting, and that's what a majority of them end up like, right? Distracted driving kills more people than DUI. Why is that? Yeah. What's What's the first thing you guys do when you get up in the morning? Check your phones, right? Just so like get up. Yeah, if you get up. Well, yeah. So, how do you get to school now? Do you walk, ride a bus, ride with people, right? So, when you're riding with people, are you sitting there checking your social media, checking your Snapchat, doing all that stuff? Well. If you're going to be driving, just make sure you give yourself extra time, right? Either do it at home or get here early and then do a check in the parking lot, right? Just don't do it while you're driving. Distracted driving kills more people than DUI because people do that all day, every day versus DUI. Typically, um, unless they have a problem, typically most people go out like after work or at night. Okay, so different out. Another video. Why 
watch how quickly this stuff happens, okay? Again, it's got the timer cutting down there in the bottom right. This guy's on his phone. He still stops, looks both ways. Still pulls out her own phone. Watch how long she has her head down for. Listen to listen to what she says when she runs this car. She said, "There goes my phone." Watch what she does mid crash. Watch where her eyes go. Right back down to her phone. Right? These videos, luckily, nothing bad happened, right? But they show you how quickly things can happen, right? If you take your, you know, turning right there, the kid takes his eyes off the road for a second and that truck stops in front of him. Okay? That stuff happens all the time. Scott's Law, do you guys know what that is? Have you covered that yet? We covered it a little bit. We got some more. Okay, what is it? Okay, so there's a sticker right there on the bumper. When there's a police officer or other emergency vehicle going there, you have to pull to the right or slow down. Yeah, so not pull the right, but change, change lanes, right? Move over, slow down, Law, is what they call it, right? Scott was a firefighter up in Chicago. Um, 2020 was one of the deadliest years for the United States Police. We lost three troopers last year. Um, we currently had one that was just hit on I-55 up north, um, who, to be totally honest, probably isn't going to make it. Um, he was sitting there on a crash, and a lady came along, and she was going, I think TCR, you guys said that she was going just under 90, and just straight in the back of his squad. So... I think the guy is, I think he's 31, early 30s, and married, right? Um, his injuries are basically, he has brain swelling um, and no brain activity. He's still on life support. He's in a deuce building. Okay? Right? For essentially no reason. You know what I mean? So move over, slow down. Um, that's another big thing. Typically after these happen, um, they send us out, and we do details all the time just to get people to uh, to do it. Um, this car right here, when I took over for the guy before me, um, I had to watch him give this presentation, and that's that's my squad car. Um, I didn't know he used it in this program, but I was. This is on I fifty five up by Williamsville. I was checking on that car that's in the top right corner, um, and it started sleeting. So I had stopped, turned my lights on, I went to get out of my car, and that's the last thing I remember. Um, I remember seeing a car coming and just thinking, well, crap. Woke up in the hospital. What they told me was, that's the car that hit me, pushed my trunk in, spun us around. I got out, went to the passenger side, asked the lady if she needed anything. I would radioed in that I'd been hit by a car, and they found me throwing up on myself in the ditch. I don't remember any of that, okay? They thought I had a detached retina. I had the equivalent of multiple concussions and they wanted me to have back surgery. I was 31 years old, right? Everyone 
almost everyone that I know has a similar story like that, right? Not as bad as that, but they, at some point they've been hit, their car's been hit, stuff like that, okay? So this is a big deal. So not only emergency vehicles, but if you see someone else just on the side of the road, just do the same thing, okay? And when you slow down, what speed do I want you to slow down to? The speed limit's 70 on the interstate. What What do you think you should slow down to? Is it, you think you should slow down to 65, 60, right? Slow down enough to where if I'm out of my car and I look back, I could tell that you've made an effort, right? This troop right here, this was 2014, 245 in the afternoon. You see him over there by the guardrail. He's trying to get up. He can't. Um, he did live. Um, people always ask her, like, why didn't the driver get out of the car? If that's you sitting in there, are you not freaked out? Okay, he did live. He still works for the state police. He just doesn't patrol anymore. Um, and you can understand why. We did catch the lady that hit him. She was DUI and she's still in prison. Okay. This is Mike and Paul. They were best friends. The guy before me who did this put this in here. They were his best friends in high school. He said Mike had a little sports car. Everyone knew they liked to go fast. Paul was riding with them. They got done after a basketball game. Mike was going over an overpass so fast that he went airborne. Well, what can't you do when you're in the air? Can't do anything, right? You can't brake, you can't steer. Comes across, hits another car, and it kills all three of them. I leave it in here because, like I told you earlier, what are you responsible for when you, when you drive? Everything. Everything, right? Everything. So now not only did Mike's family have to mourn the loss of their son, but they knew Paul and mourned his loss. And then what do you think the family of the other driver did? They did, but they also they sued him. Right? They sued him. Okay. These are just some of the things I want you guys to think about when you're driving that car, okay? But I, like I said, zero fatalities, that's our goal, right? So we went over our fatal four, what'll get you in trouble versus what'll get you a, a warning, okay? Why you get tickets, what to look for on a traffic stop, the two things we're gonna ask you for, right? Do you guys have any questions? Not a one. They'll have all sorts of questions for me tomorrow on the yeah. show. Hey, what do you guys tell Trooper Malloy for coming in and talking to you today? Thank you. Give him a round of applause.